Hey YouTube, Dr. Sean here with a video that's about stubborn belly fat. Do you have it? Well, if you got it, it's really something that you want to get rid of because it's a bad thing. That's why you want to get rid of it. So this video will tell you about what it is, first of all, the five types of fat inside your abdomen. They're not all the same. Some of it is actually good and you want it. So stay tuned to find out what that is, why you want it, and some of it, of course, is bad. So we'll get into the bad types of fat that you have in your abdomen. We'll get into a particular condition that causes your, your belly fat to stay in there, why it won't go away. And we'll, call, we'll, we'll identify the, the big contributions, the five things that cause you to, to develop visceral fat. So, you know, stay tuned for, for this whole, throughout this whole video to get all those important points. And of course, at the end, I'm going to tell you how to get rid of them, okay? Not just what causes, but at the end, I'll, I'll share and some points along the way to keep it uh, interesting about how to get rid of this visceral fat so you understand not just visceral fat, but stubborn belly fat. It goes well beyond just visceral fat. All right, so let's get into it. So what is belly fat? So let's, uh, let's uh, look at, it. first of all, the problems it causes. So it causes a lot of particular health conditions that a lot of people probably aren't aware of. And you can screen shoot that, but real fast, insulin resistance, impaired glucose tolerance, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, hypertension, heart failure, congestive heart failure, heart attacks, valve problems, arrhythmia, sleep apnea, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, um, brain health, lots of different things are associated with poor metabolic health and the, the consequence of it, which is obesity, abdominal obesity in particular. So um, here's a picture of it. This is a classic dad bond, but um, this is, uh, this is while it's really common, um, there are many different forms of abdominal obesity. So it's not just this particular one. And I've, I've talked about this particular problem before. This is really more than just fat inside your abdomen. This is really a problem of the consequence of that fat, not causing mechanical you know, protrusion of this, but it's causing inflammatory response and disease and it's literally making those stomach muscles weak. And so even if you took out that visceral fat, it would still bulge out there because this person's abdominal muscles and structures are so compromised, they wouldn't even be able to hold in their guts. So when you're a young person, your abdomen is nice and flat because you haven't had impairment from chronic disease from all that visceral fat yet that you will be accumulating to cause weakening of those tissues and structures. Nobody's talking about this. That body is a real problem. If you've got anterior displacement of that abdomen, you've got serious problems and you need to address that. So uh, let's look at another form of this is, is uh, instead of just being profoundly fat and obese, like that poor gentleman was, let's look at a colleague, Alex, uh, from the Army National Guard. Meeting. Now, Alex is a toffee. He's actually thin on the outside, fat on the inside. So if you saw Alex in a mall, you wouldn't really think of him as an obese guy. He does not meet the levels of obesity, but he is fat inside. He's got invisible obesity. He was filled with visceral fat inside. So um, this is a big problem. And the problem with, with toffee, thin outside, fat inside, is you got low levels of subcutaneous fat, but high levels of visceral fat and you increase your risk of mortality. So you really don't know whether you're just obese, the type of belly fat you have without getting a scan. And that's why I like MRI scans and analyzing what's going on. And that's why people are motivated to really optimize their health, come and get scanned and work with me to figure out what's going on. So let's take a look at this particular picture. Now this is a little bit controversial because it was on the cover Sports Illustrated and, and um, a lot of people said she was healthy. A lot of people said she's not, you know, fat or healthy at any weight. I don't agree with that. You're not healthy at any weight. Uh, this person, I, in my opinion, I'll come out and Dr. Sean, if he's guess healthy or not healthy for a million dollars, cover my kid's education, help me out what I need to, get. <laughs> I got that as a challenge. Uh, I got five kids. <laughs> um, she's healthy. Now she's of weight, but she is healthy from the standpoint she is not going to have much visceral fat because her face is, is attractive. Um, she's got a lot of sub-Q fat. She is going to be fat outside and probably thin outside, a FODI, fat outside, thin outside.
fat outside, thin inside. Now, I don't know for sure because we don't have an abdominal scan on this, this uh, model, Yumi Nu, but if she's listening, you know her, send her my way and we'll get a scan, see what's really going on inside Miss Nu. But my guess is that she has uh, got a, a, a lot of uh, a subcutaneous fat mostly and very little uh, visceral fat, relatives, relatively speaking. Well, let's, let's address subq fat and visceral fat from an MR standpoint, MRI standpoint. Okay, so let's look at the different compartments of fat so you can understand what I'm talking about. And this is why uh, MRI scan is so useful. All right, so the stuff in the middle, that's the fat inside, okay? That's visceral fat. This is the deadly stuff, the inflammatory stuff. And almost any form of chronic disease you have, if you Google it, is going to be associated with or connected to or caused by visceral fat. I just challenge you to do it. You got something wrong that's bothering you. You got a prescription of something you're taking drugs for. You're going to the doctor. You're worried about that you have it. Google, put it in Google, comma, visceral fat, or the technical term for it is visceral adipose tissue, and see how many studies probably pop up. They talk about how it's caused it. And just, do, just for fun, Google it with cholesterol. And you're not going to find cholesterol associated or causal to it, but that's all your doctor talks about. Okay, so pay attention. You want to get rid of your visceral fat. Look at what's going on inside. So the biggest fat compartment right here within the abdomen is visceral fat. There are more visceral fat inside than they are anything else. So with, when it comes to MRI, you want to be more dark. The dark are the muscles and the bone. You want to be more dark then you are white. When it comes to being unhealthy, you're mostly white. So this person has got a lot of visceral fat. Now let's look at the subcutaneous compartment. Okay, we talked about there are um, four predominant compartments, really five compartments to fat inside the abdomen. So first one is visceral fat. The second one is superficial subcutaneous fat. Okay, so see this black line going around here? You should be able to hopefully see that. It goes around here, this black line. It is actually in the subcutaneous fat, but it divides the subcutaneous fat into two compartments. That's really critical. Nature says this is so important. We're going to separate these two, and it puts a layer, a membranous uh, fascial um, layer in there called scarpa fascia to separate. And superficial subcutaneous fat, deep subcutaneous fat. Now, I recently did a, a video on that, so you can go back and look at it. But this stuff is good. It secretes adiponectin. This stuff is bad. It secretes inflammatory markers. So you know, which one are you? You don't know how much of which you have unless you get scanned. So um, these are two other compartments, so that makes up three. So you want less of this and you want more of that. You want less of this or none of it. You really want none of that and more of this, okay? So um, these two are bad. This one is good. A couple other bad players. See this white stuff here on an MRI scan? Fat shows up as white. So I already told you that dark is, is muscle, so these are the muscles on the side. And uh, these muscles down here uh, are streaked with white fat. So that's deposition of fat within the muscle. So myosteatosis or adverse muscle composition, or you actually get fatty replacement of mus muscle tissue. So fat starts developing muscle. That can't be good. I mean, you got, you got muscle in your fat. How well are those muscles going to work? Poor. And so this stuff accumulates over a period of time as you, um, as you age, if you are living poorly, or it, let's say you're unhealthy, you're living incorrectly, but you, as you mature, you start living healthy. Well, guess what? That stuff goes away. Okay, nobody tells you about it. Nobody's checking it. But you do not want to end up when you're 60, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old with accumulating fat, and then your muscles are weak, and you're like, oh, my God, how did I have a wheelchair? You do not have to end up in a walker, using a walker, using a cane, or a wheelchair if you start living correctly. So let's analyze, figure out what's going on in your situation, and work to correct it. All right, so the final fifth compartment is organ fat. Okay, so you can actually develop fat within, the, within your organs. That includes your, your pancreas, so you get pancreatic replacement, uh, fatty replacement of your pancreas, and... And then fat within your liver and other organs can get fat deposited within them. So fat is a bad player or can be a good player depending on the particular depot. And it's time we get educated about this. Physicians should be educated about this. 
and physicians should be educating patients about this so that they can optimize their health instead of paying attention. I'm tired of talking about cholesterol. It's a distraction. Stop talking about it. Talk about what matters. Bad fat in your body and good fat in your body. Optimize what's good, good healthy muscle tissue, and limit what is bad, the, the, the inflammatory fat, and then optimize good fat, superficial subcutaneous fat. All right, so those are um, the different compartments to, to your fat. Let's get into now uh, what causes this, okay? So let's take a look at that. The, um, well, before we get there, let's look at a good, a good photograph of, uh, uh, of, a, of a colleague, another colleague from the Army National Guard. This is Gabe, and Gabe has a thin layer of subcutaneous fat, and he has a nice address. So that's how you want to try to look, um, have a thin layer of subcutaneous fat, and I've shown uh, Gabe's uh, MRIs in the past, so I told you you want to be, you want to have a limit how much white you have. So Gabe's visceral fat is just this little bit right here, and his muscles are are all these dark things in here, very large, nice developed six pack, and and uh, his oblique muscles and his psoas muscles. His core is massive, and uh, vertebral body, and he has you know some other dark spots are in there. Is his internal organs like his gastrointestinal tract, his colon, some of his um, intestinal tract. So uh, that's good MRI and exam on a, on an um, abdominal exam MRI, and that's his belly button, so you know what the level of, of he's at. All right, so let's talk now about the things that cause it. What are, in, in Dr. Sean's opinion, the five things that cause stubborn belly fat and make it really hard for you to get rid of, this, of, of uh, stubborn belly fat? So it includes visceral fat, but of the other bad players. Now you're getting educated about it. So first and foremostly, it is processed foods. So processed foods typically are things come in bags and boxes. That's what most people think about. But it's also this stuff that you get when you go to fast food or restaurants, or you know you may be bringing home or have delivered to your house. And this is processed food. So basically, uh, you want to be eating food in whole form, chunks of meat, uh, and not things that are, are processed. You, you know, if you're eating vegetables, you want to eat vegetables in unprocessed form. Um, I personally don't eat vegetables unless they're fermented uh, because I'm concerned that uh, over a period of time, there's small, uh, small chemical characteristics of vegetables that are toxic very, you know, very minimally over a period of time, and they cause disruption to us. And we're seeing a lot of really strong um, benefits to just eating meat emerging through the carnivore diet. So I'm sort of modified. I eat the carnivore diet with microbial contributions from fermented foods, which include fermented vegetables, which have eliminated that. But, you know, uh, when you ferment, it's natural processing, not human processing. It's us humans that mess things up. Nature's got it together. Nature's got it going. Um, nature will really optimize you. Get out of nature's way and, and stop messing with things, humans, and you'll, you'll live a lot better. All right, so that was the first one. The second one that causes stubborn batter, um, belly fat to, to stick around, you can't get rid of it, and contributes to it, is alcohol. So if you're drinking alcohol and you're wondering, what the heck, you know, why can't I get rid of my belly? You know, probably the worst of all that I've seen in getting scanned are people that are big beer drinkers. You know, so you get, you get carbohydrates, even... Um, even low carbohydrate beer still causes significantly a lot of uh, visceral adipose pit, pit, uh, uh, visceral adipose tissue or visceral fat in particular. So you may not get a lot of sub-Q fat, but you're going to get a lot of visceral fat. And that's what you're not going to see. And a lot of guys and girls are always pinching their skin and say, well, I ain't got no fat in there. I'm, you know, I'm doing good. Uh, maybe they're getting kind of big, you know, barreled, but they, it's visceral fat that they don't see going on. So alcohol. You know, uh, if you if you can cut it out completely, my God, I just saw so many tragedies in the ER from people with alcoholism. It's just the benefit you get from it is not worth it. It's not. It's just a very, very, you know, strong, um, sensual kind of a thing that you get involved with alcohol. It does not optimize you. It will not improve your life. It's something you're holding on to. Uh, to try to feel better and cope about things. So I just recommend man up, you know, um, be a big girl, cut out that alcohol, 
And I've never been better. My clients who do give it up to agree, they don't miss it. You know, it's just a wonderful thing. They're like, it gets better because they're, they're getting healthier without it. So get rid of that bad visceral fat and uh, by cutting out alcohol. Another big contributor, uh, problems to uh, stubborn belly fat is poor sleep. So um, associated with poor sleep is uh, obstructive sleep apnea. So obstructive sleep apnea interferes with your quality of sleep. It interrupts it. And as a consequence, you can't sleep. You get elevated cortisol and it contributes to visceral fat deposition and stubborn belly fat. You start holding on to fat. So if you're sleeping poorly, you got obstructive sleep apnea. You got to deal with that, get it corrected. And I have some other videos on sleep, how to do that, but you really want to get rid of any kind of problems with sleep and sleep apnea that you have. And finally, the, the last one is a poor microbiome. So this one I could do, I could write an encyclopedia about if I knew more about it. <laughs> it, it deserves that kind of importance, but, um, a microbiome is a collection of microbes, microorganisms live inside you, about 70 trillion of them. And so you're more other organisms than you are yourself. And these microorganisms have a huge contribution to how you metabolize the food that you in, ingest and that you're digesting inside of you. So um, it may have, um, it has a, a extremely, not may have, it has an extremely important role in your body's overall health. And we can, in the future, we'll be treating, I'm confident of this, treating obesity and uh, other medical conditions through fecal microbiota trans, basically changing, transplanting the microbiome from one person into another uh, to optimize them. So I'm just gonna pause it here and say, I predict Big Pharma is not a big fan of these FNTs going on because it's gonna eliminate ongoing revenue for them because you're going to cure disease and nobody will, you know, these people won't need medicines. They'll be cured by a healthy person's stool. And I suspect that's why the FDA only allows it for one condition right now, C. difficile, and not for anything else. But stay tuned on the microbiome. Learn about it as much as you can. There are ways to optimize your microbiome um, beyond just getting a fecal microbiota transplant. I have other videos on the microbiome that you can watch. And if you really want to optimize your health, optimize your microbiome, come be a client with me and, uh, and I can work on optimizing your microbiome. All right. So the, the last point I want to talk about is an interesting, um, interesting contributor to making visceral fat refractory to being eliminated. I don't think it's directly causing visceral fat as much as it just makes it tenaciously present and hard to otherwise burn away and eliminate. And what it is, is a type of exercise, chronic endurance exercise, when you're, you're exercising in for endurance, a very long thing. So that can be cycling, it can be cross country skiing, it can be rowing or it can be distance running. Now, I know that's gonna bother a lot of people out there, they think it's super healthy, but you know we saw in all of these sports, people who come and get scanned, they look good, you know, from the outside, but inside they had higher levels, unexpectedly higher levels of visceral fat and fat around their organs um, inside of them. This was very alarming and very disturbing. So, um, and we need more studies looking at. It. So if you're a distance runner and you fancy yourself, you, you think your health is really important to you, I challenge you, come see me, call me up. I'd be very interested in having you work with me uh, to become a client and see what's going on. So, uh, um, you know, come to my website and take a look and, uh, and go through the process of uh, being considered to be a client. All right, so let's get in what you got to do to, um, you know, there's, there's distance running into a little photograph of that. And last point I'll, I'll say is here's, here's an example of an MRI scan. This guy was filled with visceral fat and he was running 10 miles a day, five days a week, 50 miles still had all this visceral fat. We couldn't get rid of it. And uh, I was disappointed. I said, look, are you, you know, I went through all the things I just went through, Dr. Sean, uh, you know, checklists on stubborn visceral fat was causing it. And he wasn't doing any of those other things. It finally came down to he kept running. And I told him, stop that running because we got to see how, how well you do. You're supposed to cut out running and do sprinting. So finally he agreed. <laughs> but it was a good thing he, he was resistant because if, if his visceral fat went away before, we wouldn't notice all the other things we had him doing. But 
This time, the only change he did was he stopped running and he started sprinting. And he goes from all this visceral fat to almost no visceral fat and he grew muscles. So sprinting helped him grow muscles, sprinting helped him get rid of that visceral fat. So just recommend if you're a distance runner um, that you, before you start doing distance runner, do an MRI and see where you are with the visceral fat, check it again in six months and see if it's increased or if it's gone away. Um, or if you are a distance runner, get your scan now and then stop doing distance running, try sprinting and see, we saw this time and time again. And I think you're gonna see that you got rid of your visceral fat. All right, now let's get into the things to get rid of visceral fat. Okay, so first thing I'd say is F processed foods, F processed foods, especially processed carbs. That means forget them, okay? Might mean something else. Some of you, other people, Whatever it takes <laughs> to get you to stop it, just think about it in and the, and the worst way, okay? Get it out of your diet. You wanna be eating clean and not eating processed foods. So F processed foods, especially F processed carbs. So uh, the next thing is stress, okay? Stress contributes to visceral fat. And I've talked about this in the past. Um, and so I like to use the example of of, of lions. So if you got too many lions in your life, okay, the modern day, maybe work, pressures from work, maybe pressures from home, whatever they are, they're creeping in and they're causing you to be distracted and stressed out. You know, you know the feeling, they, they've captured your, your mind and attention. If you can't kill them, meaning you can't solve those problems, that's the first thing is try to solve those problems, okay? Dispatch those lions, get rid of them. If you can't kill them, some problems are unsolvable. You know, if you got, you know, a child with a health condition, uh, you know, you may not be able to solve it if it's a terminal terminal condition or something, or you grieving or something. But you, if you can't solve a particular problem, then um, and you can't move away from it. Sometimes you're in a job and it's just a disaster, right? You're a square peg in a round hole. Wake up. Um, you can't solve those problems in that job, get another job. It's time to migrate. So our ancestors would not hung around a valley where there were a lot of lions and tigers and problems for us. We would have, if we couldn't have killed them, we would have migrated and gone to somewhere else, get out of Dodge, go where, go where the, 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 the grass is green. All right. So, um, and then if, if you still can't, if you can't migrate and you can't get away from those problems, the next thing you gotta do is you gotta mitigate that stress. So my, one of my favorite mitigations of stress is sprinting. So uh, I used to be a part of this healthcare organization that their idea of dealing with stress was mindfulness, okay? So we, <laughs> we would be in a room and be uh, basically standard people, you know, most, you know, mostly, you know, overweight and unhealthy. And we would be dealing with stress with mindfulness, like, you know, thinking about positive thoughts. Now, nothing against that, but good Lord, my God, you've got to attack this problem bigger than just thinking about, you know, positive thoughts. And I, I agree, we think, we, we always see that glass, tend to see that glass as half full, uh, I'm sorry, half empty instead of half full. So a lot of these problems are self-created, but you can do, some very you know proactive steps and be aggressive about mitigating so in nature you know antelopes get stressed out when these lions are circling around in there i mean it's stressed out i mean it interferes with those antelopes ability to put their little heads down and eat that grass you know they're stressed out but what mitigates their cortisol what mitigates their stress is when the lions finally attack and they have to sprint and get away that action of sprinting, high intensity exercise dissipates and reduces that cortisol low and the effect um, on, the uh, on, the, on, on, on their physiology through sympathomimetics, that fight or flight response. So if you are stressed out, you get a bad email, you get a tough phone call, you have some kind of report that came out and looks really bad, drop and do 25, 50, 100 push-ups one push up, you know, if you can't do it, just do it. Do some pull ups, do some sprinting, some high intensity, maximum intensity exercise. It doesn't have to be a long time. We're talking 10 seconds would be beneficial to help mitigate that stress. Okay, so mitigate that stress, deal with it. All right, when it, um, when it comes to alcohol, you know what you got to do? You got to stop or you got to at least dramatically cut back on alcohol. That's what I recommend. I mean, these are serious, serious problems. It, 
alcohol is not improving you. It's not something, no Olympic athlete, you know, goes some kind of, you know, joins the Olympic team and the coach says, okay, now let's get you drinking. Okay, now we're going to get the gold. Okay, so I want, do you drink? You don't drink? All right, here, start drinking beer because it's going to help you get that gold. Seriously, stop alcohol. It's not improving you. It's, it's, it's so strong, you're thinking about it. It's going to be microbiome related. There are microbes in you that want you to drink for them. They need it too. They like it. There are certain species of, uh, of microbes down there that need alcohol. And there's certain, believe it or not, there's certain species of, of microbes that actually create alcohol. You can actually get intoxicated. There's some people that suffer from these strains of microbes and that induces levels of intoxication. They It's called auto brewery syndrome. They've actually been arrested for drunk driving, even though they never had a single drink and phew, you know, the criminal justice system, of which I was a former police officer and a former criminal prosecutor. I went to law school and I put people in jail. Um, they don't consider the science. They, they, there's, nobody believed these people, and it, it really exists. It causes alcohol intoxication without drinking any alcohol from these organisms that, can, that eat carbohydrates, and then they generate alcohol. It's a terrible, terrible condition. Um, and then when it comes to sleep, you got to improve your sleep. Watch my videos on sleep. I've got videos in my channel, how to improve your sleep and sleep, sleep tip aids. And then um, I've gotten into, um, I've talked about the microbiome as well. And you can come and work with me if you're really interested in optimizing all your things. So here's a screenshot. These are some additional things that you can do to optimize, optimize your health. Besides these strategies went over to help get rid of stubborn belly fat and, uh, as always, if you like this video, give it a like. I like interacting and enjoy the comments I get from my followers. So you can ask questions and comment. And uh, please share this video with other people. Um, if you enjoyed this video, uh, consider subscribing to it. 